Welcome today to Terry Cheeseman. Uh, he works for Haynes Watts Tax Department and he's talking to me today about things of interest to the accounts profession. I thought it would be good to have a, a, a talk with a tax specialist because that's my background and I love tax specialists a bit. So Terry, do you want to explain who you are and what you do in your business? Yes, uh, thanks for asking me along today, Alan. Um, I'm a chartered accountant who's been lucky enough to specialise in tax for the last 21 years. Self-professed uh, tax nerd. Um, I love it. That's why I get out of bed in the morning. Um, I am currently the CEO of Haynes Watts R&D Northwest Limited. We're a tax consultancy operating inside national firm of accountants, Haynes Watts. Uh, I haven't always been an accountant. So like a lot of the profession, I fell into accountancy at the age of 36, having studied electronic systems in the mid 80s, didn't pursue it, then had a, a a very eclectic career in um, software development, uh, housing, forestry. Um, at the age of 35, my wife said, for God's sake, choose a profession and stick with it. <laughs> um, uh, at that time, I, I, I thought, I'll retrain in IT and software, um, just as the first dot-com bubble burst. So I thought, maybe not. Um, at the same time, conveniently, um, the, the guy running the course said, I know an accountant around the corner in Belfast. So I tried out. Um, uh, by two th that was 2001. By 2007, I was a mixed tax um, manager, bringing back into play my love of processes and systems. So I turned tax departments around so that they were more profitable than accounts departments at the time. Um, and in 2007, I started doing tax project work primarily R&D tax relief and, and capital allowances. As everyone remembers, the tax landscape was awash with EBTs and EFERBs. It's all been unwound, it's all unraveled. Um, I chose those two tax reliefs straight out of the, the, the legislative handbook um, and ratified every finance act. So a hop, skip and a jump brings me across to, uh, from Belfast to Bath, Taunton, increasingly, um, going up in size of firms. Haynes Watts were looking for a tax professional with my specialisms to roll out a center of tax excellence. So that's what brought me to um, Hereford. Um, and then an opportunity to become a um, business owner in Haynes Watts, uh, running this income stream in the Northwest. So um, here I am in Norley at the moment. Um, having said that, we've got clients in England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. So it's been, a, it's been an interesting journey. Um, still loving it. It has indeed. That's an amazing, fascinating journey. I thought mine was good, but yours is just a million times better. So, okay. So do you want to tell me a bit about who your clients are and what does your team look like? Yeah, very, very um, varied client base from individual businesses, um, their accountants. So uh, not only do I act for 18 Watts offices, but 17 independent accountancy firms as a, as a bolt-on consultancy. Um, uh, trade bodies, um, I, I'm a strategic partner with the, the maritime industry and uh, uh, trade bodies like um, power generation engineers, uh, because uh, you know, that those sectors are, are, are very fast moving at the moment. Uh, I often partner with, uh, in consortiums with technology brokers because it, it's not just historically bringing tax relief to, to a company, but, but it's the, the fund begins with, for me, planning the journey going forward. Um, I like to think of myself as a, um, an innovation uh, strategy provider. Um, so partnering with uh, IT professionals, software houses, uh, business coaches, um, accountants, um, corporate lawyers as well, um, always interested in exploring um, their client bases. Yeah. Uh, the so current team, um, uh, a wise professional once told me that you can do a lot of damage with a team of 12, <laughs> a tight team of 12. So we're currently 11. Um, I'm, I'm in the process of uh, uh, interviewing a, an executive to, to, to operate in, in the home counties. That'll take us to 12, um, that, 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 that great figure. Um, myself, the accountant and the tax specialist, my CTO, um, uh, Kay Oldham, sadly between us, we've got 46 years tax practitioner experience. <laughs> um, we've, we've got Anna Fisher, who is the, the client relationship manager. Um, uh, she manages uh, 
all client relationships and introducers um, and accountants. She is a commercial accountant herself, um, and she's a, she's a former client, so uh, she understands the, the the discussion from both sides of the fence. Um, the rest of the team are um, scientists, mathematicians, and engineers, <laughs> because that's the nature of the work we're writing technical pieces on. So um, currently five of those are going through tax uh, exams and one is nearly, it's, it's about 12 thirteenths of its way through ACA. Um, but that's the team. Um, we, we are very much flying the, the PCRT flag at the minute for all you accountants out there, um, professional conduct in relation to tax. Um, we, we're tax specialists. We're here for the long, the long game. Um, the, the monies get watered from time to time, especially as we head towards recession with uh, um, pop-up boutiques. Now, some pop-up boutiques are good. You know, they, 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 they come with seasoned professionals, but other ones, I like to call them uh, switch my R&D <laughs> or like utility switching companies. Um, um, it, ha it, has the, it has the revenue hot under the collar, uh, you know, admittedly. So I made it an integral part of my business plan um, uh, on the 14th of November 2007 to get Haynes Watts representation on the with, with the revenue that the dictates the future shape of R&D tax relief. So Kay Oldham is the first um, Haynes Watts representative on that board. Um, okay. Kay and I also sit at a national level in, in, in Haynes Watts through R&D National. We govern quality control for all um, R&D claims that, that, that happen throughout our 50 odd offices. Yeah. So that's what okay. we've got at the moment. That sounds, that, that sounds like an amazing well organized tax department. Um, uh, so am I right in thinking you don't only do R&D claims? Well, uh, with 46 years um, experience between Kay and I, um, we can turn our hand to anything because the, uh, you're not doing a full job unless you look at holistically at the business owner, their tax bill uh, and the company's tax bill. Um, it, it's, all, it's, all, it's all the same uh, family bank balance ultimately. So we do patent box, mainstream capital allowances, special uh, capital allowances, RD claims, um, land remediation claims, because you know if you have a, um, an independent house builder, they're doing everything. They're, they're doing the novel modular build. They're also remediating the land. So it's, it's been able to offer a full package. Um, then when you've got uh, business owners in the R&D um, uh, cycle for at least a medium term, it, it does bring into play remuneration restructuring as well. So, Back in the day, before the, the, the last dividend changes, um, taking a salary was 42% more beneficial than dividends. It, it got squeezed by 16%, but still, still better in the absence of R&D. The minute you throw R&D into the mix uh, and you've got um, significant higher rate tax on your dividends, and say 54%, there's a tipping point around 54% deployed in R&D, you've got to be looking at swapping those dividends out um, for a bonus um, uh, right. paid within nine months of the year end. Yeah. Uh, especially as we head towards recession, you've got business owners taking dividends to pay for their lifestyles and then taking more dividends to pay the tax on their lifestyles. And they're <laughs> in that hamster wheel. Yeah. We can stop, um, as long as they're in it for the medium term, we can stop that, that wheel. Um, yeah. And uh, Yeah, no, that sounds very good. Okay, lovely. Um, so you're a wide variety of tax and you take a holistic view. Okay, so I've got the picture. You're a nationally recognised R&D and tax specialist. You're like my tax department. So I wouldn't deal with R&D claims on a, well, when I was in practice, uh, the more complicated ones I used to ship out to people like you uh, because I didn't do it with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but one of the things that used to really annoy me, I remember once I had a client who was just the simplest R&D claim in the world. Everything he did was R&D. It took me, uh, I accept for probably 10% of his remuneration, which was a bit of admin. And so I used to multiply up the salary costs and put through the claim. And it took me maximum three hours, probably nearly one towards the year. I stuck behind his the claim attached to the claim his fundraising document which explained exactly what he did and as i say it took me two to three hours to do and it used to really wind me up but it seemed like simple and yet other people would be charging a percentage fee 
based on the percentage of a claim when it was so easy to do. I mean, he had four staff and I think, I forget what we got back from him, but it was quite sizable sums of money. So uh, how do you placate annoying accountants like me? Well, um, I have full CEO freedom to do business as I choose, and that, and that in includes um, setting, setting fee rates. Um, yeah. I take a very pragmatic view. I mean, in the last two accounting periods, we did 11 pro bono jobs. Now, um, some just to foster some goodwill, some to earn new tech language, because I, 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 I'm a sponge for knowledge. and need to know uh, yeah. about machine learning and AI. You need to understand your, your subject matter. Um, and sometimes as part of a, a PR or str a strategic partnership, for instance, uh, with a CEO who's got 22,000 um, LinkedIn followers, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do some free work for him yeah. <laughs> because yeah. get some PR out of it. Um, uh, we, we have a two-tier two, two um, fee structure, four claims of under £14,000 of qualifying costs. Um, there, there's a £375 fee. That is basically my admin fee for taking on a small claim. It allows yeah. the business owner to hold on to most of that um, uh, tax savings. And then we work yeah. with them going forward to build, it, yeah. build the business and, yeah. and build that self-perpetuating machine where yeah. when R&D starts to fund further growth. Um, uh, we do have a standard contingent fee of 25%. Um, yeah. We're not the cheapest in the market. We're not the, the most expensive. But whenever you mention in the same breath to uh, a prospective client, that if they're willing to give me at least one referral after we've done a good job for them, um, yeah. there's an instant 30% discount. And yeah. usually at the point where they realize that they can earn 20% commissions with us um, yeah. by referring to friends, family, supply chain, the yeah. conversation about the contingent fees goes away. Um, right. Equally, uh, with the new audit rules that accountants will be aware of from the 15th to the 3rd, 20, 2020, um, all of Hinge Watts clients, if they're an audit client, I, I, we can't do contingent fees. So we, we, we work out a pragmatic fixed fee. So I'm infinitely variable on how, uh, how we do business with, you know, it's about the long-term relationship. Um, and especially when you're partnering with accountants, I want to keep the accountant and the end uh, client happy. Um, yeah. We don't tie people in like a lot of boutiques do. Um, because uh, that creates a lot of bad feeling. You get the, you know, with those experiences, they get the gold-plated treatment in year one <laughs> and then telephone treatment after that because they yeah. signed up to a five-year deal. Um, if you're happy with our work, you will continue to re-engage with us. Um, so I do not tie people in. Okay, that's really good. Yeah, I don't like the idea of a five-year contract. It seems to me like it would be a restraint of trade. Uh, actually, when we were chatting earlier, you told me some, about some quite interesting claims, and this isn't on script. Um, uh, you mentioned the barrister's claim. Uh, what was that one about? Okay, so um, uh, the tax legislation, CTA 2009 and, and 2010 amended, is very narrow, narrow stream. It tells us the mechanics of how to work out a claim. Um, we've got the BIS guidelines, which is our Bible. You, you'll know from looking at those before, those 43 paragraphs. The EC Commission, um, until we finally come out of Europe, that st still sits as a higher framework. The EC Commission um, uh, explains a, a qualifying enterprise as not, not only limited companies, but, but biz, business units um, that are subject to corporation tax. Now, that includes CICs that don't have full charitable status that are subject to corporation tax, um, trade protection associations, industrial, the old industrial providence societies, um, and members' organizations as well. So, we did um, a trade protection association, which was a barrister's chamber, subject to corporation tax on, on holding money on the services that they charge the barristers for. Now, they had a digital acceleration um, uh, project, and we got them a six-figure sum um, that wow. then helped fund the next stage. I mean, they, they, they are streets ahead of most, most other barristers' chambers now as yeah. a result. So there is a much wider framework um, uh, and it allows us to get some very interesting claims, including, yeah. um, uh, I, I remember when I, I relocated to the Northwest, a, um, a corporate lawyer came in with the local uh, Chamber of Commerce um, hit list that he had, <laughs> uh, and, and he, he, he had the business size and the sector, and we went down them and we laughed because, uh, you know, done it, done it, done it, done it. You know, there's very few sectors that we haven't looked at. Um, uh, the, the one that gets uh, a lot of people's uh, smirks is uh, 
the, the guys that did the practice costumes for Strictly Come Dancing, um, I got them 55 grand of tax back. Now, 10 grand of it was performance enhancing materials, transducing properties to take heat and sweat away from the lobbies. Um, but 45 grand of it was they were an early adopter of Magento 2 and they tried to cram it onto a redundant IT infrastructure. It was never going to go on. Um, 18 months later, burned through three subcontractors, sacked two people in house, um, tore it all up and started again. You know, a great example of a failed and abandoned line of investigation. Um, yeah. And you claimed the R&D on that claim and helped them thrive, basically. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 it can be quite cathartic as well to get, you know, it, because R&D forces come, business owners to think about blood, sweat and tears and failure. Yeah. It's the nature to think about success and commercial output. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're asking them to think about some of the more difficult times in, in, their, in their business lives, yeah. um, to get them so, cash. Back. So couldn't most accountants do their own claims? They, they can. I mean, under self-assessment, um, the, the actual business owner could do their own claim. Um, but it, it's the difference between um, a, a, a generalist or a specific compliance accountant or tax manager that, that's got so many balls to keep in the air um, yeah. and, and using a specialist. We do, we do R&D 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, we're exposed to a lot more opportunities and laterally applied methodologies that we learn on, a, on an ongoing basis. Um, we're, ver we're very much used to diving underneath the... Um, the, and getting the story behind the numbers. Um, yeah. So, so uh, and describe to me a sort of typical R&D claim. I, I mean, I acted once for a guy who was writing an algorithm to predict investment performance. What, how would you put together that claim? Um, what you... Yeah, well, in more sim simple business organization structures, um, a, a sales meeting, obviously, during yeah. which I, I, can, I can get quite a lot of technical information out of a sales meeting. It, yeah. you know, it, it, it's forming that initial bond. Um, once we established in the sales meeting who the competent tech professionals are, because R&D is about technical input. It's not about, you know, yes, you must meet business owners, the, 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 those that are going to decide to sign the engagement letter. But ultimately, the next meeting um, is a technical brainstorming session with the right number of people around the table to leverage everyone's busy time. Because sometimes that that forum can be quite engaging, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it sparks uh, you know thoughts of of projects that people have forgotten about over time. Yeah. Technical brainstorming session will will generate a defined shopping list, um, which yeah. we we bounce back after that. It's got a full information request for the financial. Um, uh, people and, and, the, and the technical people. Um, that allows us to write the, the technical narrative. So gone are the days of putting a number in a corporation tax return. Right. Um, the revenue reserves the right to uh, um, refuse to process those. Um, yeah. They must be accompanied by a robust uh, narrative. So right. um, our, our reports, so the file notes that I talked about, that we don't need war and peace on a small project. Um, yeah. File note is six to eight pages long. Um, right. The full report starts at three pages. Um, yeah. It covers off the, the legislative um, uh, and tax framework. Um, it can expand up to, to anything. I've just signed off on one, um, an insurance uh, a company that's got two sets of development uh, uh, departments in it. The, their, their report's 63 pages long because it has to be, you know, it's yeah. three million pounds of, of qualifying costs every year. Um, yeah. So um, it, if we come along, uh, what, what we've developed a USP in amending up claims still within the amendment window to, to the extent that venture capitalists who, are, who buy in to uh, companies uh, always give us their claims to have a look at and we've amended them up between 60% and 400% um, right. by, by doing a, a much thorough, thorough job. Um, yeah. now, Coming along to a company that's maybe been doing their own claims for 10 years, um, yeah. they'll have a framework already. So yeah. um, in one we did um, uh, just at the start of the year, um, the, the best way to do it was to, to, to break it down into 10 half-hour slots, um, yeah. which was facilitated very well on, on, the, on a computer screen, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we just had sort of uh, intensive uh, 10 half-hour sessions. 
and um, that got enough uh, shopping lists across the across the company. That company's claim was amended up from four ninety to seven hundred and sixty k of qualifying costs. Yeah. Um, there was a, a just over a million pounds RDA capital allowance as well for, for a new um, uh, research center, new lab. Effectively, yeah. um, tax savings of about three hundred and sixty grand. Um, but the, the strange thing about that one was that the finance in-house finance professional just used to um, have a go at, at the t- deployments and yeah. were in front of all the department heads. They were, they, were, they were like bunnies in startled headlights. They'd never been in front of an R&D professional. But nobody had asked their opinion. Um, yeah. So, you know, by talking to them, the, the competent uh, technical professionals, that's how the claim became a lot bigger. Um, yeah. uh, um, so luckily, managed to get out to of the like, house. It sounds to me like if you are doing your own claims, periodically you need what I would call a compliance review on those claims, aren't you? That you select a sample of files and say, have they spotted everything? Because if you're doing, say, 15 or 20 a year and you think you can do them yourself, that is actually quite dangerous. Is that a fair description of activity? Yeah, it is. Uh, and even t- take take the client. Um, uh, I did a claim for for guys. They the they customize vehicles. You know, they'll they'll do a couple of hundred Sky vehicles um, yeah. in a day on a production line. Now, ten years ago, their accountant helped them to do um, a claim, and they got pre assurance with the revenue, and, and they stuck to within that narrow framework. Yeah. But over the ten years, that the company had quadrupled in size. Right. So an annual review was was long overdue. So yeah. you know, and widening that, uh, and but you're right. Because if just uh, modifying a vehicle, that doesn't feel like research to me. So how did you get the claims through? Um, the 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 modification of a vehicle, they have they have their own uh, in-house engineering uh, department. Um, so uh, they they will reverse engineer a lot of um, uh, competitors' um, solutions. Yeah. <laughs> play the Chinese at their own game. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, they they had a 14-tier multi-quality uh, management system that they'd software developed. Um, yeah. And they had a, they developed um, an all-lanes um, uh, data management system, um, yeah. complete, complete with buzzer, buzzer bells. Um, right. So, so they, they had completely digitized the whole process towards... Right. Um, smarter, faster, cheaper, and better results, right. which ticks all the four boxes for R&D. <laughs> okay, well, that sounds really brilliant. Okay, so let's just finish up then. Have you got any interesting stories you'd like to tell us about the last 15 months? Um, well, a couple of weeks ago, um, I was introduced to um, a Dutch entrepreneur um, who makes duvets. Now, um, he, you know, he he's already got one patent, and he's never made a patent box claim. He's never made an R&D claim. He's okay. got three, four patents pending. So yeah. for him, we're doing R&D patent box. He's moved to new premises. So we're doing a research and development allowance. Um, yeah. his, he needs his uh, salary swap from dividends to uh, bonus. And yeah. we're going to educate his Dutch and Chinese supply chain because there's embedded batch R&D costs. Yeah. Because we, you know manufacturers will tell you the R&D is free. There's, you get nothing for free in this world. Yeah. So we're going to strip out the embedded R&D costs yeah. Um, uh, and move those b- below the line where they, where they belong, shows tighter margins. So yeah. all in all, I think we're going to do about seven different um, uh, tax mechanisms to save this guy tax. <laughs> um, yeah. But by, by far the best stories uh, come, come from engineers, lifelong engineers. Um, now, yeah. um, 71% so that, that, of that embedded R&D. So I've got a client I mentor who's bringing in product from abroad. Are you saying that she can, sorry, I'm, I'm just going to have to close the window here because Giga, oh no, they've gone past, Giga Clear are going up and down installing high fibre broadband outside my house. <laughs> and, and the man on the dump truck is clearly practising how to drive his dump truck up and down my road. Um, so, um, uh, so, so I've got a client who imports, uh, who I mentor, who import product from abroad. Um, um, are you saying that you could get R and D on what appear to me to be just simple purchases. Um, yeah, t- take take um, take the designers and manufacturers of engineered wood flooring. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, one of our clients, they they do the the, the 
the premium version parquet flooring that goes into um, high rises penthouses in London, and they do the budget version. Um, yeah. They they manage all their quality control um, at the Chinese operations um, th through um, a, a subcontractor. Now, each new variant that they 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 they, they spec out in the UK and then get um, engineered through design iterations uh, abroad will have an embedded uh, cost. There will be yeah. materials consumed and there will be their contribution towards um, machinery modifications. Now, yeah. educating the supply chain to strip out those costs, which they have borne the cost of as sunk yeah. costs. Yeah. Um, whenever we did that, um, a, a lot of manufacturers will go, it's five or 7% because that's a low risk uh, value. We, yeah. One of our clients gets uh, OEM uh, wiper blades made for cars and trucks. Yeah. One, of, one of the suppliers didn't say 5% because they costed it out. It was 15.3%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, that, that's a serious cost. Um, in the engineered flooring company, that, that, that trebled the size of the claim. Right. So, uh, okay. So if you had someone who was importing, say, half a million pounds per year, so thirty-five thousand pounds of costs relate to R and D, say seven percent. What would the what would be the R and D claim coming back on that sort of figure? Um, on on thir thirty-five grand, it's a, a profit-making company, uh, a yeah. rate of return of twenty-four point seven. So thirty-five times 0 0.247. There's an extra eight thousand six hundred and forty-five pounds of hard cash. Um, and you can be, and you can go back two years, but then you're going forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and everyone if, who, if, everyone who imports sorry. from abroad or uses complicated stuff should be looking at this claim. Yeah, anybody that's making stuff either in the UK or paying somebody abroad to make it should be, yeah. should be talking to an R&D specialist. Right, yeah. that is an amazing thought. Wow. Well, um, and the, 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 the best story, which we're actually getting um, put into a bit of stop uh, motion animation at the minute um, is aimed at engineers um, because 71% of engineers that come out of um, apprenticeships or third level education, head down, earning a crust, never heard of R&D. And then a further 10% have heard of it and they go and look at the legislation and they go, I don't see me qualifying. Yes. <laughs> so um, sitting in front of a, a, an engineer and they give me a cup of coffee and I said, well, look, the, the, the way to explain this is um, the creation of a cup, which is an existing product, in a more lightweight, durable composite material that's got a lower carbon footprint is a better cup. And the journey to a better cup is R&D. And he went, that's all we do all day long, yeah. reverse engineer stuff. <laughs> um, and that claim, um, their accountant saw the highest fee ever raised to one of their clients on right. that claim. Um, yeah. uh, and, and quite often I went to see a, um, an engineer in Flincher in the top uh, North, North Wales and he said, uh, mate, I don't do R and D. I just make metal boxes. <laughs> yeah. So I let him talk about his passion, um, yeah. and it turns out he, he made uh, specialist comms boxes for Big Ben, sacrificial boxes that will take a high velocity bullet for Saudi uh, royal princes. You know, I just make metal boxes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, indeed. Well, that is very interesting, Terry. That has been one of the most fascinating tax conversations I've had since I worked in large company corporate tax. So. Yeah, it, that was amazing. Um, I'm going to tell the whole world about you. I just think what you've done is really good and well done for your success over the last two to three years and, and before. Um, it is nice to see people who come into accountancy late because you add more value, I think, than if you've only ever been an accountant. You think outside the box and clearly you do. So, Terry, thank you very much. Uh, we'll put this up on our YouTube channel if you could tell the world about